Good morning. We will call this work session to order. Today is Thursday, January 16, uh, 2020. I would like to welcome everyone here this morning and thank you for joining our work session. I uh, just wanted to, um, oh, can you, can you, you can't hear me? Let me say it again. Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. I need to speak up. You would never know that I was a cheerleader. Um, good morning, and thank you for joining our work session today. I'm Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, and I'm excited that everyone has joined us today. Uh, what I want to do, just want to make it clear, this meeting, I will call a recess at 11 o'clock. Uh, we are celebrating our 150th birthday, and we have a big uh, birthday kickoff celebration at the Douglasville uh, Conference Center this morning. So those of you who want to join us, we welcome you. Um, before I call for public comment, Board of Commissioners, I just wanted to just uh, make something clear with, with us, and it's something that if we could all agree and just become, and just make sure that we're all on one page. Um, and this is just going forward for our uh, Board of Commissioners meeting, not for these type of meetings. We just won't add anything to the agenda at the last minute or we won't make any changes during the Board of Commissioners meeting, unless it's a uh, personnel matter or unless it's an emergency. So really we'll, we want to make sure we follow the process. That's very important and transparency is very important to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, everything that comes before the Board of Commissioners meeting must be vetted, evaluated and analyzed by the committees and also then you, the committees uh, bring your recommendations before the Board of Commissioners work session and then we vote in our Board of Commissioners meeting. So I just wanted to just reiterate that and just wanted us all to be on the same page for this 2020 year and going forward. With that, with that being said this morning, I want, I'm just gonna move a little quickly. Uh, we have the approval of the minutes, Board of Commissioners, please, and I'm, uh, citizens, if you could bear with me, I'm just shifting a little bit so we can get some things accomplished. And I realize that I have several uh, of citizens that have signed up for comments. So if you just bear with me for just a second. Board of Commissioners, you have your, the minutes, please uh, prepare yourselves and read these minutes and review them and be uh, uh, prepared to, uh, to review accordingly and approve on our upcoming Tuesday meeting. Also, um, Board of Commissioners, you have the approval of your expenses as well, which is tab 20 through 22. So, so please just review your expenses and we will be um, prepared to approve accordingly on Tuesday, this for, uh, upcoming Tuesday as well. Um, I'm trying to make sure. And we have a presentation, Board of Commissioners, but this presentation will be rendered on next Tuesday. It'll be only at our commission meeting, and it'll be about the introduction of Atlas by Moreland Alti, uh, Altibelli. So we have a presentation, but it will be, we will not have a presentation uh, provided today. So next, I will go into um, tab number 18 and 19, I wanna cover those quickly. We're gonna see if we're gonna break our own record today. Tab number 18 is authorization to award a contract to Prime Foundation LLC in the amount of $1,192,650 for construction of concession stands or concession buildings at Bill Arp and Fair Play Parks to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and for the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes, could you tell us about this exciting um, Yes, ma'am, I'm project. excited to get to go first, too. That's, Me too. that's unusual. <laughs> uh, yes, this, if you'll remember, we put this out for bid several months ago. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, now we realize due to the flow of SPLOSH funds, we were able to go ahead with the project. And we had a bid with Prime Foundation for the original price was $1,182,650. And uh, after speaking with the contractor, uh, Bill Peacock, he added a $10,000, he said he would hold good with that bid, but he would like to add $10,000 for any material inflation, which uh, that took the price to $1,192,650. 
And uh, that's the recommendation that we accept that bid. He's still the low bid. Uh, so we, uh, the Recreation Oversight Committee, uh, recommends that we go with that bid for the construction of the two buildings at Fair Play and Bill Harp. Okay, thank you so much, Director Dukes. Any questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners for Director Dukes? Commissioner Geider. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if this is approved Tuesday, uh, what's the status of uh, the construction of these two concession stands? Uh, is Mr. Gable here? As soon as the contract, I assume as soon as the contract is awarded, uh, from purchasing, okay. uh, that they could move forward. That's my understanding. And the design is already in place. And the everything. design is in place. The contractor is ready to go. Yeah, okay. and that's correct. As soon as the contracts are signed, mm -hmm. they're ready to get started. Mm -hmm. And if uh, the construction cost does not eat up the ten extra $10,000, do we get <coughs> some of the money back? That's so, right. Yep. He will not use it. And that $10,000 goes to both buildings, not, not each building. Is it? Uh, just split that uh, one million one ninety two in half, or is yes, one building more than the other? There might be a little more money <laughs> on the Bill Arp uh, side. Uh, it was a it was a bid for both buildings, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure exactly how that played out. The buildings <laughs> are the same, but there might be a little more land work uh, on right. the Bill Arp side because, because of the topo of the, of the land. Okay. Right. All right. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much. And I just have one question as we move along quickly. Um, bathrooms included with the concession stands, all that's all in one package or? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Restrooms, uh, concession, and press box. And press upstairs. box, all three. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to make that clear to the pub public. Any questions? Yeah, no, okay. we're, we're good. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you yeah. say yeah, but you. I did. I'll be real quick. Um, um, Director Dukes, and this just step back just for a minute regarding oversight. You mentioned Terry Gable. I guess he's not here. But um, traditionally during our spas, we've noticed that Moreland had brought the expertise to the table because they were what? Horizontals. And obviously we've got a presentation next Tuesday um, from the, the reincarnation of that new organization that was uh, Moreland has now been acquired by Atlas. Uh, that being said, you and I have talked about this. Um, Herman J. Russell's company as part of that teaming Moreland Russell that won the SPLOS deal, um, Moreland Horizontals, Russell or Vertical, will Russell be overseeing the construction of, of this, this and all related verticals? Because that's, that's our expectation. What do you know about that? And if you don't have the answer, Madam Chair, I just ask that we have an answer by Tuesday, if that will be sufficient for time. Okay. Is that okay? Your research I, I do not know the answer okay. to that. that would County be Administrator, can you find that out for us, please, <clears throat> and have a report? David Good is well, here. Currently, the plan was for staff to, to uh, oversee the construction of the building. Okay. No, no, no that was yeah, not right. the expectation of the board when um, we were going through the bid right. process with right. Mulcair. Uh, it was Atkins versus Moreland and Russell. And after you know, it went down, uh, they did all the research on Russell and how much money they made and how great they were. Um, we, we recognize that Moreland, because they've known for horizontals, they would bring that expertise to the table. Russell, who's built Mercedes Benz and a whole bunch of other very nice projects, would bring that to the table. So uh, I'm, I'm making, like he, um, Gary Dukes had shared with us, he caught a flaw in the design in a different building. That's not his job. We're paying four points on a dollar to take him from that. I mean, it's great he has that, but that's why we have oversight. They're not there for technical report writing. So the expectation is that that's what they're bringing to the table. Then we wouldn't have paid them two points more if they weren't bringing us their literal expertise to the table. So uh, Madam Chair, I don't want to belabor this. County Administrator, can you follow up on what I asked for and, and just make sure that, that Russell is at the table for that, please? Okay, thank you so much. Any other comments and I'm gonna move on. Yep. Commissioner Mitchell, did you have anything? Well, I, I don't have a conversation, but I think to uh, Commissioner Robbins, our conversation and others that we probably should have a sidebar conversation and this has nothing to do with you uh gary uh, about this whole makeup so we'll we'll kind of revisit that and hopefully have uh, an answer by tuesday kind of what that direction looks like okay. because i think there's some things that have happened that i'm hearing that we thought we were getting versus what we're actually getting right but it has nothing to do with you though gary nope. great job 
Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Robinson, yep. and I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, if you could just remain standing, um, Director Dukes, and we're going to try to push through this one. Authorization okay. to approve a change order for Carter Watkins Associates Architects Incorporation contract in the amount of $22,864 to cover all overall increase in the Deer Lake Park Tennis Courts project cost to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and for the Chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes, just give, if you could tell us what this is yes, all about. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Carter Watkins' fee was originally based on an estimate of our budget at the time, which was $500,000. Since that time, of course, when the bid went out, the, uh, the price of the project came back $387,000 more. Uh, the, the bid price was $887,000. So, this is additional money for the extra that the project will actually be. Instead of the 500,000, their 6% would be based on 887,000, the price of the, uh, the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and they also had to do some extra work uh, they, that was required by the health department and by WSA mm -hmm. as far as the uh, septic system was concerned. So. Yeah. And that also comes as a recommendation, as you said, with the, by the Recreation Oversight Committee. Okay. Any questions from the Oversight Committee? All right. Should I say the Board of Commissioners? I apologize. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You're I'm going to move on to public comment to allow our citizens to have an uh, opportunity to weigh in on their concerns this morning. Um, Clerk, did you give me the list? You probably did. Oh, I have it here. I will ask that each citizen, as you come forward, in order for time management to be appropriate uh, if you would just uh, two minutes um, and then I, once we hit the two minute mark I'll just ask you to wrap up your your thoughts uh, in, in the interest of time this morning um, first on our list this morning we have mr. Ken Kenneth I hope I said this right Alba Halter did I say that right did I yeah okay um, your subject matter this morning is MOU. Uh, Mr. Abahalter, if you could just uh, give, uh, restate your name and give me your address. Uh, my name's Kenneth Abhalter, 5076 Chapel Lake Circle. <clears throat> I've lived here in Douglas County for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> raised two kids, got a history in uh, advertising, marketing, graphic design, been doing that my whole life. Um, I really don't know what to say. I feel like I'm very sad. There's a lot of folks up there on that commission, a couple of them that I voted for. And I've never in 20 years felt as alienated and ignored as I do today. By basically, I have no representation <clears throat> any longer here in Douglas County. And it makes me very sad. Um, this, this, this whole African-American tourism thing. It troubles me. Um, I think that we should be doing everything we can to promote unity, equality, and stop putting people in different buckets. Um, it's not easy to do, but somebody needs to make the first step. Yes. And you folks are in the position to take that first step and to make a, a public proclamation that we're not going to play that game anymore. Like I said, it makes me very sad and, and it hurts me. I'm a, I'm a veteran. I, 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 I didn't, I wasn't raised to, to, to put up with this kind of stuff. I, didn't, I don't play that game. We all came on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. And we know who said that. That's a Martin Luther King quote. And um, if there's anything I can do, I want to do anything I can to promote unity and colorblindness and bring these people together and stop the squabbling and the fighting and the, and the stupidity and the appearance of, of malfeasance, which is rampant in, in what I've been seeing lately. And that's all I really got to say at the moment. So I'll uh, 
I'll thank go ahead and sit down and leave it to you. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Um, Abahalter. Um, I certainly echo your sentiments, and also on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, I extend deepest apology for just the, the appearance and the perception. We are one Douglas. We are unified. I am a veteran. I served in the military and, uh, and a Marine wife. For, I served 19 of his 20 years, and I know exactly what you're saying. We are a melting pot. Uh, united, we stand, and divided, we fall. So I'm hoping what you just uh, placed upon the ears of all of us, this Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of Douglas County, that change will start not tomorrow, but today. So I appreciate you for coming in. You just don't know what that means to me. It really means a lot. Thank you. Okay? Next, we have Ms. Wanda White here. Ms. White, could you come forward? Hi, Ms. White. Me and you talked on the phone several times. I finally get a chance to place the name with a face. Ms. White, uh, your subject matter is in Power Douglas. Please uh, re uh, restate your name and give me your address. And remember, we have two minutes. Gotcha. And, uh, if you hear the buzzer, okay, do you have it? Yes, ma'am. Go for it. Wanda White, yes, 6640 Pine Notch Drive, Douglasville, Georgia. I've lived here all my life, all 60 years of it. Yes, Rear three kids. Um, it's sad to say that even my children have moved out of the county because of everything that's transpired and gone on. And enjoying county, I'm, I'm not that way. I'm going to stand here and, and speak my piece. I, I'm a property owner. I'm a homeowner. You know, I know people in Douglas County. This is my home. And my concern is the fact that we've taken 25 steps forward and 150 steps back. I feel discriminated against. This Empower Douglas to me is just totally racist. What about instead of African American tourism, what about everybody tourism? White people, Asians, Hispanics, why is it just black tourism? Or African American. Actually, I was looking forward to the presentation this morning because all this is new to us. It just kind of came down out of the chute. Nobody knew anything about it until it came out in the paper. And honestly, I'm heartbroken. I'm mad because this should not be for just one particular race. It should be for everybody. And, and like I said, with, with diversity, I mean, we hear diversity, we hear discrimination. And what is this? This is total discrimination and being racist against the other nationalities here in this county. And, and I don't understand it. And, and I would like to see a presentation. I would like to know how you can be friends with the person that you're giving money to and, and you're doing business with the per this person for 20 years and, and, and the county's giving money to it. I, I, I don't get that. So I would like, my request is for all this to be held until everybody else can vet this. I, I know you, thank you. Okay, Ms. White, I uh, just wanted to, I, I feel like I'm responding to all the citizens this morning. Um, I believe in the newspaper, you know, I, I love newspapers, they have to sell them, that's in, you know, that they have to make money. I believe in speaking with my, uh, one of my commissioners, the word black tourism was not what was quoted by him or her, I won't tell you which one. However, the word African American culture um, is one of the pillars of the state of Georgia for tourism. It, and we didn't do that, it's by the state. But however, the word multiculturalism is the word that we're using that will be used for Empower Douglas, not black tourism. And I agree. It, I had one citizen call me and said, once I explained it to them, they said, oh, I said it was just quoted wrong in the paper. And I know it could be offensive. And racism, uh, we, want, we don't want that to be the impression. So I just wanted to clarify that for you. It's called multiculturalism, which is it casts a wide net. It covers all nationalities, OK? Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Then why is it published as Afri African American if it covers all nationalities? No, I'm just saying uh, when I talked about the state pillars, but I'm just saying the 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 uh, one for Empower Douglas is multicultural 
RISM. I have to do my research too, but after looking at some of the, the uh, information mm -hmm. that was presented by Empower Douglas, I saw the word multiculturalism. So I'm, I'm not defending them, but I'm just telling you the newspaper said black tourism. Now, I'll talk about the pillars from the state of Georgia. Do I have my tourism director here? Here, there she is. Colin, could you come up? I just want to clarify to the citizens of Douglas County. It's a pillar, and that was created by the state of Georgia for African American history. And I'm just not sure why the state of Georgia, we could call the governor and ask him, but I will have my director of tourism come up and explain that. Thank okay. you, Dr. Jones. Yes, yes ma'am. And if you could, just quickly, Colin, I'm just trying to make sure our citizens are. Yes, ma'am. The um, Georgia Department of Economic Development, the Tourism Division, they set out um, at the end of 2018, they set out to um, identify five pillars that were basically going to be categories of how they were going to do so, social media and um, other marketing. And they named the five pillars, and they were um, African American uh, history and culture, uh, film and uh, music, uh, outdoor recreation and Georgia grown, um, off the top of my head, iconic, uh, iconic Georgia, iconic places. So we had been, uh, oh, and outdoor recreation. So we had been focusing almost exclusively on film and outdoor recreation because we had our film trail and then we had our um, our parks, uh, we have 8,000 acres of outdoor recreation, and we had really not touched the other uh, three pillars. So we are going to um, make sure that we cover all of the pillars, and um, it's not specifically um, pointed to just uh, black tourism per se. Um, all the other pillars cover can cover uh, everything. They're, they're not um, geared to uh, leave anyone out or include anyone specific. It's not black tourism, it's not white tourism, but the African-American history and culture just happens to be one of the five pillars that we will be working on. Okay, Is thank that you. Yeah, that's that suffice. Okay, then, okay great. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And so as, as you come up to speak, I wanted to make sure our citizens gain some clarity before, you know, because I know it's a lot of tension in this room today, and I want to just make sure it's clear. Thank you. Can I make one other comment? Yes. Okay. Um, and this money comes from the hotel motel tax, and the hotel motel tax does not come out of um, the local citizens' taxes. Yeah. It comes strictly from the taxes when you, everyone knows when you go check into a hotel anywhere, you pay your regular tax and then you have additional hotel motel tax, and that's what goes to um, promote all of our tourism efforts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I hope that helps. I'm going to bring uh, next Ms. Uh, Donna Turner. Please come up, and I'll just uh, restate your name, Donna Turner. And your address, if you could just state your address, and your concern is Empower Douglas Tourism. Donna Turner, yes, 8015 Sweetwater Drive. And for me to be here today is very difficult. I don't, I don't, I don't like to be on a political realm in any outspoken way. Yes, we have, I've been in this community, my husband has been in this community our entire lives. We grew up here, went to school here, raised our children here. We have two small businesses here in the county. When I saw what I saw last night, reading through what is proposed in this budget, I felt so excluded of my own hometown. Mm -hmm. This is so inclusive of the way it's written. I absolutely agree that we should bring more tourism to Douglas County, 100%. But the way that, the, that it's been written is what's caused this uproar. Mm -hmm. There's a way that it can be said and the way that we can bring the community together without dividing the community. So that I think that, that it's been poorly said that's caused me to be here. I, I, I mean, this is, 
I feel like this is a racist a aspect of it. And, and I don't think that it should be that way at all. I don't think that it's necessary. And I think that if, if it was taken back, and I think that if you guys would go back and read it again and look at it and say, how can we include everybody? Because I, I understand the way she explained that, that was a great explanation of the, one of the pillars. It makes sense. But I think that we need to change the verbiage from being just black, African-American, whatever, to let's bring tourism to Douglas County. Let's find ways to include everybody and create one community. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Turner. I Absolutely. appreciate your uh, comment this morning. Um, Jackie, and we certainly will take uh, this matter under uh, advisement. Jackie Kishan? Kesey, okay. I tried. <laughs> okay. Good, Good morning. morning. Um, Jackie Kesey, and I live at 4600 Yancey Road. Yes, ma'am. And yes, as you've heard, everything applies to me too that you've heard here this morning. Um, I've been here 50 years. I think what upset me the most was um, I am a member of these 50 years of First Presbyterian Church. Major Robinson Rochelle spoke to our congregation because for the last year we focused on a um, neighboring of our community, bringing our community together as one. And in one short few pages, I feel like all the work that we have prayed for and tried to bring together in our community was just melting away. Um, I don't know how to fix the problem. I know that uh, tourism is important for every community. Social state, I'm a retired teacher, mm -hmm. so, and I'm certified in four areas with a master's degree, so I know social studies and how important it is for our students, especially in eighth grade studying Georgia history to understand the importance. But um, it's like this read, if I did my classroom like you have implied with this budgeting experience um, and said, I'm gonna group all of this race on this side of the room and all of this race on the other side of the room, I wouldn't have had a job tomorrow, no job. And I feel like that's what's happened here. You're telling me I don't have a job. I have neighbors, I have lifelong friends leaving. I feel like tourism to bring people in, roads, my road, <laughs> potholes, out the yin yang, patch, patch, patch. I still have a few more minutes, right? No, that's Quite, but the roads, the code enforcement, clean up the trash. That would bring people in. I'm tired of riding down the road and just seeing scattered and trash, and then you call code enforcement and nothing happens. That's what would keep people here. That's why people are leaving. Thank you for your time. I Thank hope I haven't offended anyone by speaking my mind. <laughs> Miss, Miss Key, I, I really, Kesey, I said it right this time. Yes, you did. really appreciate your candidness, and I have apologized, uh, and I'm still apologizing if, um, and racism in Douglas County, we not thinking the word racism. I, the day I took office, I said, we are one Douglas. We are and, all and neighbors. We all to, and we are all neighbors and we have yes, to work together. Are. And I've touted that and promoted it and I just, I don't know how to change, again, your perception today. That's why I'm glad everybody's here in one room. So we could realize that we all the same. I worked in surgery. When, I, when we made an incision, all of us bleed the same. We all look alike, it, it, same. So all that's, it, it, it's to me, I, I, I'm telling, I'm, I was raised in an environment where my parents taught me that, to realize that you don't look at uh, color. Color has, um, the, the, my dad was a, a Korean War um, paratrooper. And it says color has no courage. So that doesn't mean if you, you know, color doesn't mean anything. Color means that well, I want to look at character. I want to look at your heart. And that's what's important. So I just want everybody in this room to just bring down the wall. And we all work together. I, I have seen nothing but uh, greatness here in Douglas County. 
I know you mentioned some people are leaving, but some people are coming as well. That's right. And so I just want to let you know that don't leave. I'm asking the citizens because we have a great board. Um, this board, we, uh, we're human, human. We sometimes don't agree on everything, but at the end of the day, we take the same position. And that's to serve all the citizens of Douglas County, not just one particular citizen. So please accept my apology. I just can't allow you to walk away today with, with well, me not saying that. And, and the Board of Commissioners' apology. Okay? Right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Larry Pierce, there you are. How you doing? Come on, Mr. Pierce. <laughs> State your uh, name again and your address, please. <coughs> Larry, <coughs> Larry Pierce, mm -hmm. 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Color. Color. Well, did you know animals are the only ones that see in black and white? Mm -hmm. There is no color, technical color in animals, none. No, you're okay. Keep going, Mr. Pierce. <laughs> Mr. Pierce, that was a fast two minutes. <laughs> We're just testing, Mr. That? Pierce. <laughs> Keep going, Mr. Pierce. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear it too good. I really did. <clears throat> My ears stopped up. <clears throat> but uh, so the red cape in the bull ring is strictly a gray color. Yes, sir. I didn't come up here to say that, but I thought you'd like some history. Now, I don't know. I don't know who coined it, but however the editor, Mr. Daniel, coined it, that's what it came out to. That's what it came out to. It came out to tourism of color. Now, you know me. I get phone calls. I've got board of directors over at Martin's. <laughs> and Mr. Thomas was in there one day, and he, he's the one that has the hearse at Willie Watkins glass sides and the horses and all, and he maintains the horses. And he sat down. I said, Thomas, sit down here. I gotta ask you something. I said, can you tell me, as a black man, what would be of interest in Douglas County for black people to come and see? He says, well, Larry, I don't know. He said, but if they come over, Maybe they should come visit Willie Watkins' funeral home. And everybody laughed, and I laughed, because I thought that was humorous in the way he said it. Now, we've got a corner that has a, a, a morgue under the Museum of Trust. But in looking into this, about who's involved in this, Mr. Robinson and Mr. Watkins are associated and the taxes that are owed by one or the other, Mr. Watkins, is insurmountable. Now, he's probably hiding behind the cloak of church, and I don't pay taxes. Well, they're 26,000, 15,000, 9,000, tens, tens of thousands of dollars. Now, the thing about it is that, my last statement, Madam Chair, unless I'm mistaken, you are respected as a Madam Chair. And if any one of those people put something up to a vote, if Mr. you don't believe in it, you can turn it down. Mr. Pierce, it's yes. your, two, your two minutes. Ago. I'm, I'm trying to finish that. up. Okay, because I'm I mean, keep going. You know, uh, you know, some days it'd be cheaper for y'all to hire me. Okay. I'd save you a lot of money. But anyway, you can deny bringing something to a vote. You do not have to agree. And this time you were right. You was right, she was right. You said no. But the three others Mr. said Pierce. yes. Mr. Pierce. And that's where the colorblindness comes in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And what I'm going to do uh, for the citizens of Douglas County and also for this Board of commissioner at Commissioners, I will be reaching out to our newspapers. We need a retraction statement because it, it's caused more trouble than it's worth. That uh, caption was incorrect. I did have a personal meeting with my commissioner, and that was not the quote. Uh, again, we have to sell new. Uh, well, they they have to sell newspapers here in Douglas County, but uh, they threw the wrong grenade on the table because what it's doing is causing distension in this community, 
and I don't want it to be that way. So I'll be making a personal call today to the newspaper because they're the ones, and that's the reason why you hear that caption. It, it is, it's an offensive caption. So we'll, I'll talk to them about this, okay? So please, if we could just go on to our next person, Miss Rose McGee. Is it Rose McGee? <coughs> Rose, come on up to you. Hi, Ms. McGee. How are you doing today? Give Thank us your you all address. for allowing me to speak here today. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what's going on with well, the other thing, but... What, what is your uh, address, Ms. Oh, I'm McGee? sorry. It's 3945 Lithia Way, Lithia Springs. 3945, okay. And I like the bull. I like what I see up here. I've been in the, this county for 20 years, and other counties are growing, so I'm glad the Douglas County is going forward to modernizing. So, and I like the old board, but I like the new board too because it's a sign that we're going forward. But that's not why I'm here today. So I'm here today because um, first I want, if I can pre preface this by saying I bring jobs to Douglas County because, uh, and I also vote. I make a conscientious effort to vote. Um, my, my reason here today is um, I'm going to, I'm complaining about, uh, unfortunately, the way that I've been treated and I'm treated by the black uh, deputies here in Douglas County, unfortunately. I had, um, I've called them, within the last three years I've called them twice. Me, of course, as I call them, I'm the victim, and it's small. It's a small matter with me. It's a matter of I've had two white people to to trans to invade my property, to trespass on my property. Uh, one being next door, and I've 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 asked. Uh, I put a sign up that said no trespassing, and I called the officer only because. I wanted him to say, stay off my, stay off my property, so much so that they've gone through my personal mail into my mailbox, so that's a bit much, and one has admitted to it. So I don't want to digress, I don't want to go away from the issue. The issue here, why I'm here today is to say, please, someone look at what these black, the black deputy, he came and he, he, the way he spoke to me was totally out of character, twice, two, two deputies. And in addition to that, um, when he left, I was the aggressor. He's, he's more, he said more so, he said first I mm. accused the person of being a racist. Mm. That's two the, minutes already. That's it, that's it. <laughs> okay. All and, right, thank you. So, so what, we'll take this matter under advisement and if you want to dialogue a little more, you feel free to call my office. Oh, if okay. you want to talk, okay, we'll okay. get someone thank to give Thank you, you my thank number. you. Okay, thank you. Um, next we have um, Dave Werbeck, I, I hope I'm pronouncing <coughs> that correct. Mr. Dave Warbeck, please come forward if you're here. I guess they have to leave. We'll move on to the next one, Mr. Terry, um, Miss Terry or Magadi. We have a Magahi, am I saying that right, Magay? I'm saying it wrong, Miss Terry. You know what, I, I thought that was exciting, she said I will come and speak. Yes. <laughs> oh, you were just signing <laughs> in. I know, okay. I <laughs> well, you <laughs> but I will speak, um, and I, 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 I listen as a black woman in, in Douglas County. I've been here since 2005, 2004, and in listening to everybody, you would assume that everything is fair for black people and that there's no reason why there should be some special things set up, but I am black. You know, I have a black family, I have a black son, and things are not fair. I wish they were. I wish everybody was colorblind. And I think the reason why the state had to set something in place is because there needs to be some special things set forth. You know, I help black business owners in this county. 90% of black business owners cannot get funding. I have black business owners that have excellent credit, but they cannot get funding. So things are not fair. And so I would hope that when people see something that is being done for the African-American community, that we don't find it offensive, that there's some things that just need to happen because there is a group that is not doing well. When I sit and I talk to people, 
African American business owners make less than anybody. The average business owner makes about $70,000. The average Hispanic business makes about one hundred and fifty. dollars The average Asian business about $400,000. The average white business about $600,000 a year. How does a black business be successful making $72,000 when you haven't even paid expenses? So I just want to encourage you, we're talking about unity, that, you know, especially after you heard the young lady from Tourism, Colin, explain, but people still didn't hear that, right? These things were set forth. It wasn't like somebody was doing something that was wrong. They were doing what they've been charged to do. So I just want to encourage people that live in this county to really open our eyes. Things are not always fair for black people. You know, the, the playing field has not always been level, and it still isn't. Things that were done years ago, we are still being affected by those things. And that's my time. So okay. I'm so glad that I can Okay. So <laughs> you made within your two minutes, so thank you, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Terry. Um, I have a couple, I have Kathy Warren on here, and I had Mr. Watkins, you were on here, but you just signed in. Were you thinking you were just signing in, too, like everybody else? Yeah, exactly. oh, okay. Kathy Warren, if you please come forward and you give me your address. And I believe you had a question this morning. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Kathy Warren. My address is 3444 Stembler Ridge. Uh, I'm, I'm going back to a newspaper article as well with a question clarification, so this could be very quick. Um, I think I saw that three of the members of this Board of Commissioners have hired or are going to hire part-time administrative assistants for four, at a salary of $50,000 a year. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm curious then as to where this money is coming from in the budget. Why do three need help, not all five? How does this salary then line up with the current full-time administrative help? Uh, it just struck me. It, it really caught my eye. So I'm curious as to how this got going and how this is being paid for and specifically why three need it and two don't. So yes. if that's correct, then I do, then my questions persist. <laughs> so. Typically with the, with we usually listen to you, uh, with sure. the, but the questions, I certainly would love to meet with you offline. Can we do that? Because sure. in this setting, you usually just tell us, not ask questions, but you just okay. convey your concerns. All right. Well, that's my concern is how this is taking place. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So can we meet up? Have anyone, uh, is anyone here, Fred, if you could, could you take Mrs. Warren's information for me so I can give her a call? Fred Perry is my director of human resources. I'll have sure. him uh, get your information and we'll chat. Is that fair? Because typically we, it's, we don't usually answer the questions that right. you're proposing the board because we have to respond. Okay. okay. This good. is your moment. So, but I got you. Thank you. Okay. I'll take care of you. All right, Board of Commissioners, that was our last uh, comment today uh, from our citizens. Again, we appreciate you coming in and um, Madam Chair. delighted that you're here. Any, uh, any feedback or any response? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you have something to say. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. No, Board of Commissioners, before, I want you to be brief, and I want you, you have a three-minute response time, and then we'll rein it in with, if you have a rebuttal, it'll be one minute because of our time. Typically, you know, I usually allow you all to just go on and on. So, Vice Chairman Robinson. I, I, thank you for, I now have the floor. Yes, you do. All right. This is important because we, to the citizens of District 2, to this county, um, and to the Sentinel newspaper. You, you, you have to, be, um, while I heard the three minute comment, you, be, you have to be able to face your accusers, the assertions. It can't be dismissed and just, the sentiments that are out there regarding me personally, and, and that's my job, is to take it so it, it, it doesn't bother me. What I've learned in being in office for almost 12 years is, shh, just listen. Just listen to the voices. Don't react. Stay off Facebook. Cut all that out. Not one of you have heard from me say anything. Not one comment since that article. Right? So this is important that you finally get to hear me personally. Right? And so, so again, you, you can't backbite, whisper. 
because this is what you want to hear. So I appreciate a little latitude and for my colleagues that will give me a, little, a couple of their minutes of their time, um, like they do in Congress, because this is important. <coughs> Since it's all about me, then it's about me. Uh, th this really isn't about me. This is about the disparity that exists in the county. Thank you, Ms. McGay, who sort of so eloquently wrapped this up. Right? There's two, I've all, you've always heard me say, there's four character errors in the county. District 2, being the far east, looks like Cobb and Fulton, more urbanites. District 4 looks more like Paul and Carroll to the west, you know, rural Tolians. All right, we've got city to the north, and you've got obviously District 3, a little bit, you know, conservation, our water supply. Very, very different character areas, but you've always heard me say they coexist. They coexist. We're all equal. I've been consistent in my statements with that, all right? So some of, some of the comments that come out, which is to your point, there's a difference between equality and equity, all right? So we, yes, we're equal as individuals, but then there is a, 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 an equity as it relates to, to the point of access and information. I don't represent the power structure, I represent the people. So if I give you institutional knowledge to tell you to set up a 501c6 or a 501c3, or you can go over here, or here's how you'll get a bank loan, I'm on the people side, not the 12 families that basically been here all their lives that are running this county, that are all have friends that live inside, work for this county, and all over. So I gotta deal with the friend thing, which is if you've been here all your life, this month, January 1990, is my 30th year straight out of school. This is my county as well, right? And I've always been here. Now you may not have seen me and my friends, and I may not have seen you and your friends, but we all are here as neighbors. So I take my rightful place in where I sit and where I stand. This is important, but we're good. We all coexist, we're neighbors, we keep moving, we have our families, we have our same concerns, we have concern about inefficiency of government, we, we have all those things like anybody else. Absolutely. And again, the black and white, I mean, I'm legally blind. I couldn't tell you one from the color to the other. Doesn't matter, don't need it. But some of the assertions that I hear, I mean, I hear it, but to think that there's not disparity in this country, it, it's not a true statement. Now, we know that there's a gap and we're getting better. And you have these ebbs and flows and these moments of volatility and stuff. But please, some of the comments is like, come on now. You know it exists. It exists within this actual government. It exists in our neighborhoods and we're trying to do better to address them. Some of the, the, the ordinance that we just put in place, which is a disadvantaged business enterprise to address that all the contracts were primarily going to, I'm gonna call the privileged <coughs> business enterprises. If you didn't put those things in place, if you didn't have a justice department that deals with, as we say, certain requirements, then it would never, because it, it's based in it, it's inherent, it's in the subconsciousness. Some people don't want to look at it, some people don't want to believe that it's there, but it's inherently there, right? And so we're trying to get better. We've got work to go, we've got work to do, we absolutely do. But as an elected official, I, I, I take it all. I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. I appreciate your comments, but that was not my intent. But just because you've been here 50 years and I've only been 30, my friends don't get dis discounted because, and yours don't. We, we, we all have friends, right? That this is important because we use this very, you know, interchangeably. And I think that's unfair, even with that assertion. Right, that you, you hear the superiority and this, you know, the, the superiority or this privileged commentary that like, come on guys, ease up. You often hear me say, ease up. Let's do the business of the people, ease up. But everybody has a right to, what, what, with the First Amendment, you have the right to the Second Amendment. To, to like, okay, hold on now, I get to defend now. Right, so that, that's important that we recognize that we all have, uh, our, we all have um, our rights in the Bill of Rights. We, we all have the Constitution to, to stand before. And I took an oath to the U.S. Constitution and the state of Georgia. And I do the best to the oath to fulfill it. 
for the people. There's not one thing I have not advocated that had not come out of a person, right? All this stuff, and this is my final comment, this, this, this all had to do with our ineffectiveness of using $400,000 that we hadn't spent. Now, yo, give me one more minute. Commissioner Mitchell, can I grab one more minute? I'll, I'll be finished, um, just to use this time. But this is important, while we got here, this was a corrective action that the board sought. This was not about a hookup or anything like that. It's like, look, man, that's sort of low level. Come on, man. Look at what we were facing. 400000 that had not been spent over five years. It's just sitting there. You should be mad over that. How did it get there? The other part, we have $363,000 annual budget, and the state evaluated our board of commissioners. In other words, we take the hit for it for our inefficiency, third from the bottom. This is important. So the board of commissioners took a corrective action, and we brought in experts to try to help move this along. There were some areas that were identified that we didn't do very well on. Three pillars. This is corrective action. Where, where, where is the outrage on that? <coughs> that we're correcting it. We have the right to make corrections. See, you don't have to be so close to staff. The problem we have sometimes, we're so close to staff, you can't correct them because you're all friends. And I think one of the, our duties as elected officials is to make sure that, okay, if you do too much, rein it in. If you do too little, lift it up. So that being said, with, again, since this was all about me, and I became, um, I believe in movies, the, the dark night for the moment in, in Batman, Okay, I've got to be that guy. But my love for this county is bar none. Second to nobody else. I care. I don't need anything. I want to do the same things you guys want to make the best decisions on our behalf. But this was not about me. This was about us responding to a request for $400,000 without a marketing plan when we began. I'm the one that says, okay, now why you need 400000 And we began to dig into this things like, oh my goodness. So all this, the paper, yeah, I, I, I got a hit squad. Yeah, I was up for re-election. You know, they, they do that sometime. That's fair. Nothing's fair in love, war, and politics. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. But you didn't see me out there be defensive. You didn't see me reactive. Um, I knew that Crystal, who wrote the paper, like, go ahead and write it. I gave her the full story, everything on the pillars, how we got here, everything I just said. I took 45 minutes to explain it to the paper, and they wrote that. Well, I'll take it. So I just, since we, we say we care, because I believe I, I, I serve to be that guy who lives to care. If we say that we care, then you should give me just a little room to say, okay, now that I know the backstory, I get it. I hate that your fears were hit. I hate the, the subconsciousness. I think that was, that was bad. That was poor journalism. That was poor. Why would, you, why would you enrage the community to drive home a point? Why didn't you tell them the truth about that we're looking into inefficiency within the community? That is our job. See, that, that, that's, that, that's that rule rag that I have a problem with. Sentinel, y'all don't get to get away with that one. That was, that, was, that was very poorly done to try to create division by our, our legal organ. I say we changed the legal organ to Chapel Hill News View. That's just me. One vote, that's me. Now, I'm not suggesting this for anybody. I don't dictate. I'm just saying that was very bad. You should be sending messages of unity versus this it was so based in when you knew the truth. The lie was in the paper. So I apologize for that. But I'll take the hit. I'll, I'll walk with all of that. You know, but you guys know I care. You know my track record. And um, I apologize for any offense that may have happened out of this. But I stand on our decision um, as it relates to uh, a corrective action. And I yield. And thank you for allowing me to respond publicly, okay, Madam thank, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. Vice, uh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Vice Chairman and Commissioner <laughs> Guider. How are you? Come on. You're next. I'm sorry. Yes, and I, I think it ought to be said that uh, Crystal, who is with the Sentinel, is an African-American woman. Um, and she is the one that wrote the article, and she's usually very efficient. So uh, it's, it may be he said, she said situation. But uh, my concern uh, is that it, the way it was handled here on this board, the last meeting of the year, it wasn't on the agenda. It, it was just pushed through uh, by three of the commissioners. But I will say, anytime we get in bed with an organization or a company, we need to do our research 
uh, as Mr. Pierce pointed out, uh, the gentleman that uh, is going to be in charge of this 25,000 tax dollars has about 50,000 federal and state tax liens against him. Now, I don't know if we give it to him. Now, he's got an LLC if we give him the money, but if the federal government can say, well, he's broken the, or he's violated the corporate seal, then we can go after all of his assets. He doesn't have any assets. He doesn't have an office here. It's a P.O. box down here, down the street here. He does it, um, but the fact that he's got outstanding loan um, liens against him since 2013, I mean, not one or two, I'm talking about years of tax liens for income tax uh, violations. So we need to know who we get in bed with before things are just pushed through this board. We need to know the people we're working with. Now, he may be the nicest fella under the sun, but all I do is look at the public records. You can do it yourself. All you have to do is put his name in the public records of the clerk's office, and this has come up. It shocked me because I didn't know that at the time of the vote. But then um, he has been in, he has been a friend of his, a personal friend of his, since college days, I believe. So he didn't disclose that when he voted. The transparency is important on this board. We need to say, uh, look, I know them, him. We, I've known him for years. He's a family uh, friend. And that, then when I vote, at least you know what influenced my vote. So sometimes it is about certain people. But contracts are not supposed to be done this way. Um, it was, um, I think it was illegal, to be honest. And I'm surprised that we did, uh, weren't kind of called on that. But I've had so many people tell me that, uh, how, how did that happen without the proper research and the proper vetting and it being on the agenda? <clears throat> so we need to uh, move forward, certainly. And I understand there's been travesties done with the, the black race. Uh, and, and I probably have more African-American friends than uh, Commissioner Robinson does because uh, I grew up, uh, or my kids grew up over in the Winston area. <clears throat> long time friends, long, long time friends. I don't, I've never considered myself racist, but I have read books by Shelby Steele, who is a African American man, who talks about that some of the actions done by the federal government has actually hurt the black race. So we need both sides of the story. I mean, he, he's a professor, renowned professor, that has written a couple of books. One of them's called White Guilt, how uh, the white people sometimes are made to feel guilty because of something that happened years ago. But we need to stop. I don't understand why Colin and her staff could not have handled this. She's already set up, she had a plan, but uh, Commissioner Robinson made the motion to give it to a firm that he is also very close with. The name keeps popping up on a lot of contracts. I've said that before. I don't like all this, um, it's kind of like the good old boy thing. So it works both ways is what I'm saying. Nobody wants corrupt government. I don't care what color you are. You do, you do not want corrupt government. And you need to vet what is being said up here, what is being done up here, and where the money that you pay is going to. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, we, it's 11 o'clock. All right. Okay. Well, just one, one rebuttal, just quickly, Madam Chair. Because the assertion of, of disclosure is important. 
all right? So I didn't bring it forth. This person is out of District 3, but it's okay. I know people. It's, it's okay. You don't get to know people and, and claim them, and I don't get to acknowledge them, and I did acknowledge them. But here's what's important for, for, for my colleague to sit here. And we got a $120 million jail sitting there, right? And our, our esteemed colleague from District 4 votes, since we all know families and friends, and we go all the way back, and we, we know stuff, right? We've been here all our lives. So our esteemed colleague, votes on a million dollar contract in which her son works and benefited from and did not disclose it and then brought it forth. I disclosed it. it. It's no, no, on no. record. No, no. Board of Commissioners. Stop. We, we, board I got to my comment. I know after both the you. fact. Board of Commissioners. It's after the fact. Board of Commissioners. Madam Chair, I can't. I, you've got to go. That I, no, this, but it's not the point. The point is, stop it, guys. You, you can't go both ways. You can't have it both ways. And this is, this, to his point, Commissioner. this is, this is you, you can't do that. Commissioner, please, look, out of order, y'all. You got to, I've got to, for, I'm going to finish my statement, which is, don't do that. You're being political. If you're going to be political, be political. But don't be self-righteous, right? Because there's, there's plenty that can go both ways. Stop that. You can be called out, but. That I can call out ethics throughout this whole, I spent 40 minutes yesterday with Madam Chair. Let me tell you about ethics in this county and every behavior. I called out everything from the city all the way up. Don't do that. Don't act self-righteous. Don't do that. All right, so I'm saying that we're good. Move this thing forward. Make our decision. We don't have to agree to anything. We made a different decision. That's the whole point. It's not one way. It's been one way for 147 years. It's changing. So I yield the floor, Madam Chair, because you got to go. I yield. Okay, thank you so much. Madam Board Chair, I'm going to clarify this. You're going to have to have me thrown out of there. My, when they bid on the jail, my son's boss or company that he worked for was the best bidder. I didn't know it until after I had taken office. I came straight up here and did a disclosure on it. Yes, sir, I did. And that's on file with the clerk. Okay. Uh, commissioners, uh, I hope you all got all this out because going forward, and I mean that, work session, board of commissioners meeting, it's unacceptable, the behavior. I don't want to talk about race anymore today. We want to leave that alone. And I don't want to try to dismiss anything, but I, this county must move forward. We must unify, and we need to bring down the walls. Consider the Berlin Wall has come down in Douglas County today, and Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones just made that statement. I'm being a mother right now. I need to, this county needs to move forward and I need all this noise to stop. This is 2020, not 1820. And we're going to think positive and I'm tired of this negativity and I'm just not going to allow this board to be divided. So we need to go forward and today I'm getting ready to go celebrate 150 years in Douglas County. This county has been <laughs> sitting for 150 years. This is the day that the Lord has made. And that's what I mean, because a lot of counties didn't make 150. We did. Yes, things have changed. Things will change. But that's what life is all about. Change is inevitable. But together, we will stand. And divided, we fall. Thank you. And right now, Board of Commissioners, I'm going to call for recess. And when I call for this recess, I need you all to take a positive attitude to the conference center. And we're going to celebrate like it's 1999. And I want y'all to celebrate because these citizens need inspiration. And we are not inspiring them if we keep bickering and being divided. So take the chips off your shoulders, commissioners, because we will conduct professional business in Douglas County. And please, I'm going to stop right now. Board of Commissioners, Madam Chair, do Madam Chair <laughs> but before you recess, Will you please announce when we're reconvening and where? Yes, we, we are recessing. We will reconvene at 1.30.
please come back. And we, we invite everybody to come and put a birthday hat on. I got whistles, I got uh, uh, bands and musicians and everything waiting to celebrate 150 years, and we're going to party together. So thank you, Douglas County. I love you, and we're going to have a party today. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into recess? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Everybody, please if you indicate by raising your right hand. Yes. Can you raise your right hand? You're not. No. We have a we have a three. Three one. Two, no, Thank you. Just announce it. Slide back. Madam Chair, okay, you no. can announce or okay. recommend. We're going into recess. Recess. Yeah. Good evening. We have returned, uh, but we're still in recess right now. I don't have a quorum, and I'm going um, to ask my county attorney to just speak to uh, the plan going forward. Madam Chair, if the, if the chair or any member recognizes that there is a lack of quorum, all matters are suspended until the chair, uh, until the chair recognizes a quorum. It's... Uh, 143. The meeting was supposed to reconvene at 1:30. The chair has the prerogative of announcing the period of time she's going to wait for a quorum. At the conclusion of that period of time, the quorum, quorum does not present under Robert's rules. Uh, this body can't continue the work session because the work session is transacting business because it's a purposeful activity required under your charter. If at the period of time you designate quorum is not reached, you should come back on camera and to this public and tell them when the meeting will reconvene. And it would have to be on a date that you already scheduled, probably for purpose of advertising. And that would move us to Tuesday at 6 p.m. to reconvene the work session and have a joint work session slash voting meeting. That means there will be no consent agenda. Everything will be itemized. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So do you want to announce how, how long you're willing to wait? To 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we'll stay in recess until 2 o'clock to see if we have quorum for purposes of the public and the TV. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, and we'll just hold off to 2. So our film and crew, I don't want to waste your film, so he can just mm -hmm. I would like to start by saying we had an amazing um, birthday kickoff uh, celebration uh, for our 150th uh, birthday here in Douglas County. So kudos to uh, the Board of Commissioners and all the citizens of Douglas County as we begin to celebrate a year of excitement here. Uh, it's 2 p.m. Uh, this meeting is uh, not coming out of recess. I do not have a quorum. We will attempt to reconvene this work session uh, on January 21st, uh, and it will be combined with the Board of Commissioners meeting, and the time will be 6 p.m., and it will be held here in Citizens Hall. So again, there will be a joint work session and a Board of Commissioners meeting, and we will attempt, I'm using the word attempt, to uh, combine those two meetings and uh, reconvene. At this time, uh, if there's nothing else to come before us, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>